it's far too early and I'm about to go to Dubai from Dubai to somewhere near Australia then to New Zealand so just vlogging it's pretty smashes everything in the other room <laughs> They're not meant to start work till 8 o'clock, it's half 7 in the morning. Um, I got blocked in the other day, on Saturday. Used the footage in this video obviously, but Saturday I was probably wearing the same clothes. You know, well done, just well done. You absolute clowns. So yeah, Virgin Media is coming to cause absolute fucking carnage. Can't wait and I have to be frosty carnage. Hiya. Hiya. You actually haven't been on film yet. Hiya. Oh, Morning. On fire it up. No dear, he's been on. So Brittany had one job and what was that? Look after the tickets. What's Brittany left in the house? No, just a backup copy. It's just a backup. Just a backup. See? We've got an old phone, but it's just... Obviously the phones aren't... Look, there's... Uh... Nerd. So, first take up visas. Never needed one to go. No. So, first expense out the window. So, we're waiting on confirmation if we can go. <laughs> so, first take up on the way there. Visas. I've been in New Zealand now quite a few times, and this is the first time a visa has been mentioned. Now, when we booked the tickets, we booked them prior to the visa law coming in. And Emirates didn't really turn around and go, hey, you know, you need a visa. You know, here's an email, here's an update, we took your money. No, and it was a bit of like, yeah, finally get to that desk. Here's my suitcase, you know, here's my passport. Have you got your visa? And I was like, what? No, we got turned around to the woman sitting on the desk, the help desk, and she was like, all three of you? Yeah, we're flying together. None of us have visas. And she's just like, and I go first, you know, and it's like, could take up to 72 hours and it says do not try to fly if you do not have a visa and I'm like you know 72 hours it's going to take quite a while to get there but shit man you know it, it's what do you do and um did mine did mum's and then <laughs> did Britney's and then Britney was like uh, it doesn't matter if you spelt my name wrong she was just like oh my god so she was on the phone tabling away you know what I mean you're talking like 40 minutes have gone by by this point by the time she's took details of all of us so anyway Brittany gets an email through and confirmed you have a visa now Brittany was the last of the three so we go over the desk my mom gets checked in i get told i cannot get on the airplane i'm like what and they're like right you need a visa and then oh it's popped through but i haven't got an email don't worry about it it's popped through an hour end and i'm like okay you're gonna get all the way to auckland new zealand and your visa hasn't come through so that was the first hiccup anyway. It wasn't major, but it was enough like going, oh my God, here we go. It was someone like 24, I guess 25 pound plus international costs. So it was about 30 pound for the visa. So you need a visa to go to New Zealand. Where's that? There's that. That's me there. Oh, this. Yeah, look. Oh, yeah. I see what you meant over there. Yeah, I was like, what are you on about? Oh. Apparently that's an ultimate breakfast, yeah. ultimate. Vegan sausage. Really? Really? Messy pair, different pair. Yes. They're spreading. They're spreading. We're in the smoking shelter. That's my mama has an eighth tab in that hour. Um, just waiting. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Turn that off. 
Oh, but stop as a flower bell. You meant to put your flight socks on before your flight. Mother. <laughs> watching crawl fell asleep for 20 minutes oh my leg oh. and then I'm three quarters away from Spider-Man and I watch Joker I'll get to Joker So this is probably the quickest visit to Dubai ever, like we're already at the next gate. It hasn't even been an hour from the plane landing for our next flight. And use the whistle well, to you won't know what to do. In the unlikely event of a landing on water. Pretty screen's not working either, but we'll go out and take off anyway. To Bali. All right, I'm, I suppose I can talk about the Bali incident now. <laughs> you can look back at it and go laugh at it a bit. Um, I will apologise if anyone can hear a hammer at any point. As I've just got I got all the way to Bali and um, someone started knocking the hammer. I don't think the show's got the outtakes, but there I go. Anyway, um, you know, you, you get checked in and um, we have the instant with the visa and we get on the air and like we go to customs and we go through customs and it's great that they can control customs really well. Take off your shoes, um, your pockets, take out your bag, you've got your laptop, you've got your camera, you've got your hard drives, you've got all your bags of liquids, and 
you know, the sit dry through stuff, swab stuff in cases, your wallets and stuff like that. And yeah, you get through customs and you can finally relax. And you've got like another three hours or whatever for your plane. And you know, people get anxious, people get arsy, you know, you, you go through and I mean, I recently had an operation, you know, last year and I put metal plates now put underneath here my cheekbone. So of course I went off and the, the you know, put your hands up in the air, get searched. So anyway, gets on the plane and then it's like eight hours to Dubai, depending on weather or whatever. Get to Dubai and it's like you've got to be at the other end of the airport, you've got to like get a bus or you've got to get a train, or you've got to get John Canyon, Steve Martin to give you a lift and a taxi. It's, it's, it's massive, it's like a multi massive supermarket, you know. And you get over there and you get there, and yes, we're changing planes. And as you've probably seen as well, the next plane we got on wasn't the Royal Emirates flights, but this one's a pretty crappy screen. My mum's screen didn't work as well. And uh, you know, people have got demands when they get in the aeroplanes. I need six pillows, and it's just like, whatever, man, just sit the fuck down. You can't do anything. So, anyway, gets to Dubai, uh, and we're going through customs. And again, same memo, you know bags on there and different companies have different policies a bit rudeness and stuff like that but bag on yep get that that's swabbed again you know and we've literally got off one plane yes we've scooted across the terminal onto it but there we go so we have another eight hour flight to bali <laughs> and this is where it's like okay so we get to bali and um we get off the airplane and like bali was like no advertisements there's no corner shops there's no big posters or anything like that it's very traditional it looks like the um palace from coming to america and that was pretty nice to look around you know staff were really grateful until you know again we got through customs and we get the security and it's like we've literally got off the plane right walked along outside there there's another pair of uh, stairs up there you go back there and back on the airplane there's no one getting off i don't think so anyway but Hey ho, and you gotta remember the coronavirus is going on there as well, so they're congesting a lot of people together. You know, people are getting confused about where to go. So, when we're going through customs in Bali, like, oh, can we just get back on this plane and get this flight done? And me and Britt go off to the side, my mum goes the other way, because they're like this way, that way, that way. Again, get your laptop out, take your socks off, you know, take your false teeth out, get your bag, get your bag swabbed and all that. And, you know, you get to the end, and it's like going to Aldi shopping, you know what I mean? They just chuck your stuff back at you and you're like, hang on, I had this all packed, you know, it's this expensive camera, it's an expensive laptop. And you're just trying to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. And meanwhile, I'm packed up and just hear this woman in a foreign language just shouting, like starting to lose my temper with my mum. My mum's a heavy smoker, she had a lighter on her, that's fair enough, like, but it wasn't the lighter. So like, my mum had a bum, uh, bum bag with the passports in and the tickets and stuff and like you know what I mean your travel money and all that and this woman's like this and I was like what the fuck's going on here so um, I sort of wander over towards my mum and um, my mum gets sent from one side to the other and the guy's putting it through the action machines and all of a sudden like massive beeping's going along there's a lot more presence around the monitor the guys are in with the gloves on and this woman's proper giving it like some foreign language like barley language but like towards my mom and all of a sudden outside this bomb bag bear in mind we'd been through two securities by this point in newcastle and dubai they pull out a live air uh, bullet and i went uh oh Brittany went oh <laughs> my mom went white now my stepdad morris is a games keeper he's a licensed registered gun handler um, it's all for um, in the farmlands up here and stuff. He's controls a lot of land and you know vermin and stuff like that. And he obviously uses this bum bag for his ammunition when he's out. Didn't really clean the bag out properly, so literally all of a sudden, have you got a gun? I'm like, fuck. My mom's like, no, no, no. And like, if they checked it out, Morris is registered and all that. It's fine. This is a genuine mistake. You know like what I mean? But. It's a live bullet. <laughs> How do you explain to them? And I was like, don't worry about it. It's probably not too bad. You know what I mean? We're in Bali. It's not like it, stuff like this might happen over here. But, oh, God. Like, my mum went white. They took a picture of my mum. They took a picture of the passport. They, I took a picture of her tickets. And I was like, oh, my God, man. Like, oh, my God. And then all of a sudden, the woman, I'm keeping this. <laughs> and I went, that's fine. And they just let my mum back up. And I was just like, what the fuck? But the problem with that was... 
to like when right get out of there we're keeping this I thought yeah Morris is going to get killed my stepdad she's going to kill him and we went upstairs and my mum instantly had to go out for a cigarette and of course I've just took a lighter off her so she's wandering around trying to get somebody who's got a lighter and smoking away and I think generally the problem was like now you've got another eight hour flight in New Zealand and you're going to get in New Zealand and think how am I going to get in the country like literally they've took your picture the passport everything they know you're coming and when we got to Auckland which was the hardest part of it is well again with the coronavirus and all that there was a queue line like zigzag like right across maybe it's about eight lines like a good walk uh loads of people from different countries and we're just congested like that like probably just down there and <clears throat> we get there finally i mean approximately half an hour half an hour 40 minutes from the ski mind and i'm thinking is my mom going to get in and we get there and we even said my mom says we'll not come up with you just in case you don't get in and you know what i mean you don't want to turn around and do a barry kirk and get sent back to another country but um my mom went through pretty went through and they went to me and went what are you doing i was going to take my dad's when are you coming back have you got a return ticket i'm like they gave me the q and they almost let me didn't let in the country thinking i wasn't gonna go home but looking back at bali you can laugh at it but the situation at the time was like fuck so yeah <laughs> yeah there's no stories <laughs> I'm going over to Australia. I remember when I was a kid, I got set on my own. I get to Australia and figured, oh yeah, England, Ireland. No. <laughs> Not sure where this fits in the series, hopefully episode 2, hopefully when you see Callum, or it might be later on. Now this has been framed for a very long time, and one Christmas I got this uh, in a Christmas card, and you see where it's been folded there, and it says turtle of mine, a small turtle necklace, a beautiful white bone, the only memory of my brother far far away, maybe one day on this small turtle of mine, it could bring my brother to me over the seas and land on this turtle of mine by Callum Mason. And I framed that, and look at that, legit dust there. <laughs> um, and this, basically i seen this, and seeing Callum was great, and obviously this has been framed in the bedroom for ages, and I just, one of the nights when I just got back, I couldn't sleep, and I sort of seen this, and I read it, and I was like, shit, man. And then that's, the idea popped in. So if you've seen the trailer promo for The Land of the Long White Cloud, when it shows all the footage of Callum, along with Blade the District Magic, Played the Mystic Dragon music slightly in the background in my voice, um, and then cuts to me catching up with Callum. That's the promo, and that's Callum's poem. It would be in class if Callum had actually uh, wrote it out, wrote it out, spoke it out. Um, but yeah, awesome Callum, and still framed. <laughs> Come here.